Today we are going to be solving problems using order of operation. We're going to be simplifying some expressions as well. So let's take a look at our first item here, which is order of operation. We've got grouping symbols being the top operation, the top thing that we're looking for. So if you see these grouping symbols, and they could be parentheses, they could be brackets, and you might even see some braces later on. These are the type of symbols that show us that you have to do the work in these symbols first. There's another one that you end up seeing eventually, and it's a fraction bar. And we'll see it in one of the examples, which means you do the work on top of the fraction and the bottom before you divide. Powers is the next order of operation, and that is just an exponent. So whenever you see a number like 3 to the second power, or it could also be a a root. So for instance, we talked about yesterday how, or two days ago, how square roots, we can treat roots as exponents as well. We'll see that later on. So you've got to do these items before you do the ones down below, like multiply and divide. Now when you multiply or divide, make sure you work from left to right. It's got to go that way. If you don't do left to right, you're going to end up making an error. And same thing with addition and subtraction. As long as you work from left to right, you'll have less errors. So let's get on to some problems that we'll end up seeing today. So let's try this first one here, where we've got some grouping symbols and some operations we have to do first. So we see this 3 on the outside. Let's just leave that there. Bring down our bracket. Bring down the 2, because I'm going to work the innermost parentheses first. And I see that 3 and 4 add to make 7. And now I'll go ahead and work inside these brackets. So the parenthesis there just symbolizes that I'm multiplying by that 2. And so when I go ahead and multiply by that 2, that gives me 14. Now notice I've changed my, my grouping symbol from the bracket to the parenthesis just because it's easier to draw. And so it doesn't matter. At Once you're down this far, you could just use the parentheses. They're easier to deal with. And the reason they use the brackets is just so it looks a little bit more neater and cleaner. So what we need to do from here is just multiply. So 3 times 14 gives us 42. And then we minus the 1 to give us 41. So there's our first answer. Let's take a look at another one here. So we've got some absolute value bars. And think of these as like grouping symbols as well. So I'll go ahead and add those in there as well. So the absolute value bars. We'll do the work inside those first. So we're going to start with doing the exponents, the 5 squared, and we end up with 25, bring down the absolute value bar, the divide by 5, and do the subtractions. So that leaves us with negative 15, but I've got to take that absolute value first before I divide by the 5. So I'll go ahead and take that absolute value, get 15, divided by 5 gives me 3 as our answer. Taking a look at our next one, here this is a grouping symbol. We've got the parentheses as a grouping symbol, but the fraction bar represents one as well. So I've got to do the work on the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction before I do the division, is what that means. So I did the 5 plus 2, that gave me the 7. Now I'm going to take negative 2 and cube that. That means I'm doing negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So you see how there's an odd number of negatives. So that means the answer is going to be negative. Negative 8 minus 6 is what I get there. So I go ahead and multiply here, and I end up with a negative 56 divided by, and then I have to add the opposite, so I'll show that work here. So if I add the opposite, that gives me a negative 14. And so then I could go ahead and do the division, and when I divide, well, I see a common factor here. I see I can take out a... 7. I don't know the division of 14 and 56 right away, but I see 7 goes into this. So that makes a negative 8 over negative 2, and then I say, oh, okay, that's a much easier division problem. That just gives me positive 4, which is our answer. Next one here, I've got to square 4, but then take the opposite. So remember, this means the opposite. The opposite of... 4 squared. And so this is going to be negative 16, not a positive 16 there. Plus, and then we can go ahead and do this division problem because they've got to work left to right with division and it comes before addition. So division before this multiplication just because we've got to work from left to right. That's what the rule is. Otherwise we'll get the wrong answer. Negative 16 I'm just bringing down. Now I'm going to multiply. That gives me positive 16, and I go ahead and do that subtraction, and it gives me 0. Subtract because they're opposite in sign. 
Next item is to look at some vocabulary. So I've written down the vocabulary, the definition of this in math terms. And so the word is terms. Terms is part of an expression that are added or subtracted. So let me give you an example. So let's say I have this expression, 3x and then plus 2a minus 5c and then plus 8. So the terms in this case are the values that are being added or subtracted. So when I'm looking at it, I look at the numbers like 3x. That is a term. And then here I've got 2a. That's another term, so 2a. And another one. Now this one I've got to be careful. Treat this as an addition sign and then add the opposite. So if you see a minus 5c, think of it as negative 5c. That's the other term there. And then over here we just have positive 8. So those are the terms in this problem. Another item that we'll need to look at is like terms. So like terms contain the same variable raised to the same power. So let me give you an example. Let's say I had a 5x minus a 5x squared and then plus, let's go with a, a 2x minus 4 and how about a plus 3x squared. So terms, like terms again, are the same variable. So they have the same variable, or variable combination, that is, raised to the same power. So the like terms, in this case, like terms, those are the ones that, again, have that same variable. So we're not looking at the 5. That's a coefficient. We're looking at the x. So at x, here we have a 5x and a 2x. So 5x and 2x. Those are like terms. And so another set of like terms are these two, the 3x squared and the 5x squared. So 3x squared and the negative. I'm going to write down negative 5x squared because of that minus sign in front. Again, you can treat that as plus a negative. So any minus sign, think of it as plus negative. So it's a negative 5x squared. Those are the like terms. Now coefficients. Let's take a look at those. So let me give you an example here. Again, it's the number multiplied by the variable. So if I had 3, uh, 2, x and maybe 5x squared. So I'll put addition signs between these instead of commas. And so the coefficients, the coefficients are the numbers in front of the variable. And so here we don't have a variable, so this is called a constant instead. It's a constant, not a coefficient. And then here we have a 2x, so the coefficient is that number that's in front of the variable. So notice, here's my coefficient. So 2 is a coefficient. And then here, I have 5x squared. So that 5 is the coefficient of the x squared. So 2 and 5 are the coefficients. So the reason why we have to know this stuff is so that we can explain what we're doing when we are simplifying. So when we look at this, in order to simplify, we combine like terms. And so I see 3x and 9x. Those are like terms, so I can combine them. So when I'm combining them, really I'm using a property. I'm using the distributive property. I'm, I'm adding up the 3 and the 9. I'm adding those two numbers together, and then that's getting multiplied by x, because 9 is being multiplied by x, 3 is being multiplied by x, so that's why x is being multiplied by this sum. Well, I go ahead and add this together, it gives me 12x. So 12x is the answer. So really, when you're simplifying, combining like terms, you're using that distributive property. That's the property that's being used. And over here, we're using a few properties. We're actually using the commutative property first. Notice I'm going to combine this 3x squared with the 5x squared. I'm going to move them next to each other and combine them. Now, notice that the signs are the same. So you're going to add those two numbers together. And remember, you're just adding the coefficients. You're keeping the exponent the same. That's not changing. It's just the coefficients. You're counting up how many x squareds you have. Here you have 5x squareds. Here you have 3x squareds. You're combining them together to make 8x squareds minus 2x. And that would be your answer. You can't combine it any further because they don't have the same variable raised to the same power. <clears throat> Over on this other side, we've got a 7y. And circle this turn. Look at the sign in front as well. Positive 6y. See, so add those two numbers together. It gives you 13y. So that's the first part. And then you look at the next one. we got negative 3. And here we have a negative 7. And we combine those two together, and they're the same sign, so we also add them together. That makes negative 10. So there's our answer, 13y 
minus 10. <clears throat> well, the last type of problem you're going to end up seeing might be a geometry type problem, maybe a word problem in this respect. Well, if we take the find the perimeter, what we're doing is we're counting up the distance around this. So what we're doing is we're combining like terms. We got this 4p, then we're going to add on the 8 minus p, and then we're going to add on this 3p plus 1. And so we go ahead and take a look at our first one here. We got some p's to combine. I got this 4p take away one piece, that makes three P's, and then I'm going to add three more P's. So how many P's do I have all together? Uh, six P is what we have there. Do the same thing with the constants. So again, all you're doing on that last problem is just combining those coefficients, counting up how many you have. So six P there. Here we have eight, and here we have one, and those add together to make nine. And there it is, six P plus nine, and that is the perimeter of this triangle. So those are the types of problems that you're going to see on tonight's homework. Good luck.